This is So In. So usually Angie's the one doing interviews, but today we're going to switch things up a little bit because she has a little bit of personal information that she wants to share, personal news. So Angie, tell us a little bit about what's going on in your life right now. Well, um, I was unexpectedly diagnosed with breast cancer. It started with a mammogram that, by the way, I almost punted to the next year. I don't have a family history that I know of. Um, I'm adopted, so some of that family history is minimal, but um, that was not among the, the things that I, I learned. So just at the, I just, last minute, okay, gonna, I need to get my mammogram in, and then received a call back, which isn't unusual. Lots of women have had that before, and the mammogram and ultrasound in that second round, um, there was a lump, and so they asked me to come back for a, a biopsy, which I did, and the biopsy was benign, and the biopsy also, though, came with a referral to the surgeon. I knew it all of this. My mom was a nurse, um, but medical is not where my head is, so essentially what was biopsied that came back benign, there was still something in there that looked suspicious, and so I have a phenomenal surgeon who said, we can wait six months and check it, or we can take it out. And I mean, I was having some anxiety about leaving it in there, like the what if, and it was small. And so I just said, let's, let's do it, let's, let's do it. So I had a lumpectomy, and the surprise was that it came back um, cancerous. And then um, having lymph nodes taken out, and so fast forward, and having a team and being treated now at Baptist Health um, Cancer Center and an oncology team and going through what thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of people go through um, and saying, I have cancer. That's big news. Um, and I know I've been here with you most yes. days and you are handling it well, but I can only imagine <laughs> what's going on in your head. What was the first thought you had when you were told this news? You know, it's really funny because it's the same. I'm an old mom and, it, and there's a part of me that was just, um, when I found out I was pregnant against all odds, um, I think I took like, I don't know, it was like eight or something pregnancy tests. Like there's no way, you know, obviously that was the, uh, my daughter Olive is the greatest gift. I never knew I always wanted, but um, first, first thought was just, uh, I mean, this can't be real, but in, in the way that I handle and process things, I was like, as I'm reading on the screen, well, that sucks. <laughs> Those were the exact words that were in my head. I kind of downplay and you know use a little bit of humor, I think, to stave the, the seriousness of it. And then the second thought was, oh my gosh, what about Olive, my daughter? Um, and then thinking about you know, my husband and extol and just starting, it started this ripple of worry about everything. And then it's become more of, um, okay, mm -hmm. okay, we've got, a, we've got a job to do and that is to get well and be well. Absolutely. Speaking of all of it, and I don't think we've even talked about this, how did you tell all this? Oh Lordy. That so let me backtrack just for a second. I. I told Jason uh, after I learned, I wanted to have some answers first. And part of that was um, my husband was married before and his first wife, um, Andrea, died of lymphoma six months from diagnosis to death. And I knew that this would be heavy for him and some, some PTSD and rightfully so. Um, so I waited to tell him and in fact, he kept asking me if I was gonna take Olive to a Christmas party and kept pushing it and finally I was like, I don't know because I have cancer. And he knew that I, was, I had had a lumpectomy and I was like, okay. And so we just sat there together and I, I said to him, he's running for state representative and I said to him, the diagnosis changes nothing with I mean, as a passion for public service, and we are both in a race right now. Um, but I said my my number one priority, of course, is my health and getting well. I feel good. I'm I'm fit in so many different ways because I've been battling prediabetes, so that's great. But um, 
my other number one priority is Olive and ensuring that she stays a child, that this doesn't turn her into this little adult, that she doesn't assume the responsibility. So I wanted to tell her together. And so we told her in the morning um, and just said, you know, mommy has cancer. And so she'd heard of it before. And her first question was, are you gonna lose your hair? And I said, if I lose my hair, it's okay. Mom has a strong wig game. <laughs> so she knows I have all kinds of different wigs and things. Um, but then she asked other questions like, you know, uh, can I catch it? And all of these things that are, are just slowly starting to pop up and out of the blue. The hardest part was seeing her. She had a meltdown over eating breakfast um, that morning that I told her. And I'm like, I'm going in for my second surgery in 10 days. And in my head, I'm just like, oh my gosh. But thankfully I didn't say that to her because mm -hmm. I'm just in my head, I'm like, I don't need this right now. You know, as a mom, like, oh. But I held it in and instead I held her yeah. and just let her cry because I realized this is not about oranges and string cheese. This is about my mom has cancer. And so we're doing everything we can to ensure that we keep things at a kid-friendly level. Mm -hmm. She's smart, so we're not lying to her. She's gonna see changes, but also she has to remain a child. That's my duty yeah. for her. That's, that's great. And I know when anybody finds out news like this, their life changes. Mm. Every day you're looking at life a little bit differently. Yeah. How have you been living differently? What have you been doing differently? Any sort of, I don't know, habits. How do you stay grounded during this time and what are you doing daily now? It's funny because Jen, I mean, I think anybody who really knows me knows that I have always lived. I mean, I've, I've always said this, we're not here to take up space. I will use my time. And I, I've always lived like that. I mean, I've, I, I have lived as much as I possibly can and, you know, take life and just wring as much out of it as I can. Because that to me, and connecting with people, that is part of the amazing human experience. But I'm doing it now more, mm -hmm. more than ever. We eat breakfast every morning together now, every morning. And um, for better or worse, because some mornings are better, I'm a morning person, Jason and Olive are not necessarily. It, I love it, I look forward to it. Um, I also, and this one's hard for me, everything I'm doing, I take snapshots. I, and, and it will take me out of the moment for a second and I'm trying to force myself to stop doing that because like at Christmas, looking at Christmas and, in, and being immersed in Christmas and then you stop and take a, a snapshot and it takes you out of life for a second because you just wonder, will I be here next year? Mm. Will I be here next year? Is this the last time? Jason pushed Olive in one of those awful grocery carts that are meant for kids, you know, with the, the truck which she can, you know, I've got a giant, tall, little, beautiful, wonderful kid who got herself in there. I hate pushing that cart. I yeah. hate it. And um, I looked at it and I just went, is this a last? So. Trying not to look at it like that. And then also, um, try not to get just angry. Just angry. Why? You know? But I, I walked into the cancer center for the first time. And what I remember of walking in there, you know, I've driven by, I mean, thousands, probably thousands of times. And it just, just the building. And then inside it was so warm. But I looked around and I just thought, what can I do here? Yeah. I'm gonna go there on a regular basis and get injected with things that are gonna help me fight this cancer, but what else can I do? So maybe there's, I mean, not maybe, there's, there are blessings and challenges and um, I'm gonna use that. You should. What are some thoughts of how you wanna tell your story right now? 
I am being very open um, about it. I cannot even begin to express the gratitude for our team. Mm. I feel very confident that um, our team, when I have to step back, because I will um, at times, even though I was in my hospital bed sending everybody emails and things, you know, before going under for the second surgery. <laughs> and that'll still be me because it gives me purpose. And I, I love what we do at Extol. Um, but the confidence that I have in our team makes me so grateful. Um, I, but I've, we have clients who are partners who are walking through this with us. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that their services should suffer. I'm doing everything that I can to ensure that they don't skip a beat, although they've been so gracious as we've just kind of, you know, heads are still spinning, but we're, we're still doing for them what, what they deserve for, to be done, but I also appreciate that they care. And um, I will just, I will keep sharing and updating as I, as I learn and as I know more, and I think really that, has, that makes this better yeah. and easier to connect. And I will say this, one of the things that I've asked for people, and I will continue to do this on social media when I'm going through who knows what, send me your stories, those reminders of life, that life goes on. Send me your happy stories or who you, you're proud of yourself or proud of someone else or something that reminds me not of, I have cancer, I have cancer, I have yeah. cancer. Something that reminds me of life and our humanity and that despite this, mm -hmm. the world's a really beautiful place. It is. Do you have like a mantra that's keeping you going these days? I don't think I can say it out loud. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is one in there and I don't say it out loud too often. Um, certainly not on a camera. Sometimes I need that one. That's when I put my boss hat on and you know, like mm -hmm. cancer and I have a little, have a little battle. Um, but really, um, I put in my calendar instead of, you know, chemo days or whatever, they're called cancer beatdown days. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. I mean, I think that's really not necessarily, I haven't come up with the mantra, <laughs> although somebody came up with a mantra um, for me, which I love, but I think more than anything, it's visualizing myself beating cancer and putting that fierceness that I do have to work but also surrounding myself with positivity and kindness. And there is no better way to take ourselves out of our troubles, no matter how, how awful they are, or how hard they are, than by extending kindness in some way to, to someone else. That's beautiful. What can I do? What can I do with this? to help someone else. I, I think that's gonna be the key for me. I think that's huge. And you're very purpose-driven. I mean, our whole team is, that's why yeah. you, you know you guys started Extol and that's what we're doing. We assembled um, a team, <laughs> a, a mighty team. A mighty team for sure. So you plan on keeping us updated on your journey? I will. Great, great. Well, cancer picked the wrong person to mess with, that's for sure. So we, you know, more than thoughts and condolences, we're here fighting with you. I appreciate that. It's true. Everybody except for Ginger. Ginger <laughs> will do her part in whatever way she can. Yes, yeah, she can. So we, we, we're here for you, Angie, in I every way possible. Austin, Indiana is rich in history, but there are also some amazing new things that are happening there. Recently, the Extol team had the opportunity to capture the start of what's called Energize Austin.
This morning is a celebration of our vibrant and resilient community of Austin. Today marks the unveiling of a new chapter in the story of our city, one that is defined by progress, collaboration, and unwavering determination. So your commitment to revitalizing this community has been nothing short of extraordinary. Today, we gather here with a renewed sense of purpose and a vision for the future, a future that we believe is embracing growth, prosperity, and unity. Welcome to Austin, Indiana, where innovation, natural beauty, and business opportunity converge. This hidden gem is nestled along I-65, just a short 30-minute drive from River Ridge Development Authority and Metro Louisville. Austin embodies the charm of a tight-knit community, but what truly sets it apart is its strategic location for both work and leisure. Imagine a daily commute that's not just short, but scenic, connecting you to major economic hubs like River Ridge and Louisville. Austin is your gateway to a lifestyle where work is just a drive away and you enjoy. But it's not just about work here. Austin is a sportsman's paradise, situated within miles of Hardy Lake, a national wildlife refuge, Crosley Fish and Wildlife Area, and the breathtaking Clifty Falls State Park. Nature meets business in the heart of Indiana here in the city of Austin. And for those with families, Austin schools offer an excellent education, nurturing the minds of our future generation. Austin, though, is not just a residential haven. It's a thriving business hub, too. Morgan Foods, one of the nation's leading food manufacturers, operates from a state-of-the-art facility right here, meeting and exceeding global food safety standards. Austin Trihawk Automotive takes innovation to the next level, producing integrated assemblies with cutting-edge technology, including robot welding, fixture design, and internal coordination of parts production. The city of Austin also is home to small and mid-sized businesses, eight of which have opened recently, and we're on target to celebrate the opening of many more. In Austin, Indiana, opportunity isn't just a word, it's our lifestyle. Join us in shaping the future of this dynamic community where work, play, and prosperity converge. Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Rasmussen, and I'm a local chiropractor in this area. And the number one thing we wanted to talk about is what is chiropractic? The word chiropractic, chiro means hands, practic means to practice using your hands. Manipulative procedures for the joints, for the joints of the spine, for healing purposes, goes back over 5,000 years in recorded history. Every culture known to man has had people that did what I do where they would manipulate the joints of the spine and were considered healers. Now chiropractic is not that old. Chiropractic started in 1895 when a gentleman, uh, Daniel David Palmer, had a janitor in his building that was deaf and had lifting, lifted something like 17 years earlier, lifted something heavy, something shifted or clicked in his neck and he lost his hearing. So he'd been deaf for 17 years. Well, Dr. Palmer felt that if something was shifted out of alignment in his neck causing him to go deaf, perhaps I can find what's shifted out of alignment, shift or manipulate it back into alignment, and he'll get his hearing back, plain and simple. Well, it's not always that simple, but he did that, adjusted Mr. Harvey Lillard, and Mr. Harvey Lillard got up after the adjustment saying, I can hear the wagons in the street. He got his hearing back after an adjustment to his neck. That's what started chiropractic back in 1895. Now, chiropractic today, 
We have already talked about what chiropractic specifically is today in terms of our healthcare system. Well, chiropractic today is pretty much considered a specialty now. And our specialty is treating back pain, neck pain, headaches, these types of things. Those are the big three, and I've talked about those in the past. So what we're looking at here is when we look at you, we analyze our patients. We look at their spine. We look at how flexible and mobile their back is and their neck is. We look at the nerves in the hands and arms and the reflexes and all that because whenever something is wrong in your neck or low back, it can affect the hands in terms of the strength, in terms of sensitivity or pinched nerves, in terms of the uh, reflexes of the arms and the legs. So these are the things that we're going to evaluate because we want to look and see is your spine aligned, is it functioning, and is it protecting the nerves like it's supposed to? Because if it is not, it's my job to analyze it and use uh, manipulative procedures, meaning chiropractic adjustments, as well as exercises, and in, in many cases traction and these types of things, in order to try to get your spine aligned and functioning the way it is supposed to be. Trinity Churches has been in New Albany for a long time. We're known for our music, but the best thing about Trinity Church is really the people. You know, we're just a big family walking through life together, encouraging each other during the ups and downs of life. We worship on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. our traditional service. We have Sunday school at 10.15, and then we have our casual uh, service with praise team at 11.11 11 a.m wherever you find yourself in life, whatever you believe about God, you're probably going to find folks at Trinity that are just like you. You know, it's why we say you belong here at Trinity Church. There are always events, groundbreakings, ribbon cuttings, you name it around Southern Indiana. And our team here at Extol, we've had the good fortune of being able to cover a number of them. Take a look. Forest Edge will truly be a best-in-class apartment community for the revitalized downtown area of Charleston and even for the entire region. We believe this investment in Charlestown will support the city's vision to enhance the lives of current and future residents by creating a quality of place that folks can be proud to call home. What a great addition to our community. It's going to help our residents and invite more residents to our beautiful city. What's going in this spot is going to mark the entrance to the city from Highway 62 on this end in such a way that will never be forgotten. Truly a wonderful investment for the city of Charlestown. <laughs>
My name is Bert Hodge. I'm the general manager of Heritage Ford. When I was a child, I stuttered and was dyslexic. I started my career assigned to a junior position on a destroyer, and ultimately I commanded five ships, two minesweepers, two frigates, a SEAL commando ship. I got a lot of exposure to some of the world's greatest leaders. When I retired from the Navy, it was with the intent to join my father here at the dealership. My dad has been an important part of this community for 30 years. The business has changed tremendously since then, but our moral values have remained the same. This is a business where honor and integrity matter. If I'm fair to my customers, they'll come back. If I'm fair to myself, I'll be here when they come back. I'm proud to have served my country, and I'm proud to sell Fords to my community. To our community, we want to say thank you for all the support and all the help that you guys have always provided to us. Without you, our customers, our shareholders, our employees, NWSB would not be the bank that it has been or will continue to be. Thank you. Hello, my name is Olive Applegate. I turned A in January 20th. I do think, well, I sometimes work. I do kitty litter sometimes. I eat food here. I talk to people. I see what they're doing. I use, if I have something, I would do my read a book or do my electronics. So yeah, that's really all I do. And today, I just played on my electronics and they're almost dead, so I've been reading a book, Diary of the Wimpy Kid, first. Thanks for joining us this morning. You can check us out at Extol Media Sew In on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, or visit thisissewin.com.